we're seasoned travelers and even we were a little bit stressed out going into this travel day because it's still 30 plus hours of travel with a newborn. Our names are Annette and Daniel, and this is our baby Apollo. We spent the last three years traveling the world and chasing some crazy adventures as a couple. Now, after having a surprise baby in Thailand, our adventures are about to get a little more interesting. Subscribe and join us as we navigate life as a full-time traveling family together. Good evening from Bangkok, Thailand. We are currently in the BKK airport at the Turkish Airlines Lounge because we are making the very long journey to America after having lived in Thailand for a year. We've said bye to all of the wonderful friends that we've made here, said bye to our beautiful house that we brought our baby in, uh, which is still crazy to me that we're going home to America after a year. But it's happening. Apollo's meeting his grandparents. Yay! But first I need a shower. All right, hello. So, we have got situated in the lounge and it is time for a, our first long flight with the newborn. Let's see how this goes, big boy. Are you happy to be showered? <laughs> <laughs> Take a right. Yep. All right. So we thankfully oh, are only a five minute. Hey, go away. <laughs> We're thankfully only a five minute walk from our gate, and they should be boarding any minute now. So I hope we end up getting a situation where we have a bassinet. But that's actually. I don't want to say part of why we chose Qatar, but a different plus because the other airline we were going to look for didn't have a bassinet for like an eight hour flight. Right. So like, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. E5. Daniel, open the door for us. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then, baby. <laughs> It is so surreal leaving Thailand after a year and I think three months that we've spent here. We have loved every second of it. We love Thai culture, we love where we've lived, we love the amazing people we've met and befriended. It's just crazy to be closing this chapter in our lives. But man, Ugh. anyways, excited for this flight. How excited are you for the flight? Pumped, <laughs> ready to get on. Something that has been an amazing surprise though, traveling with a newborn. We have gotten fast-tracked for everything. My goodness, what people let you do and get away with. No, I don't, I mean, I think they have to open it. Oh, they just said zone three, so I wasn't sure. He said zone three, but then told us to come over here. I'm just gonna wait right here. Uh, anyway, sorry, but what people do for you when you have a newborn and like obviously you don't expect anything out of the usual because we're just like every other traveler, but right. man, they sent us through fast track. Ah, okay. To echo what Daniel was saying, yeah, they sent us through the fast track lane. We went through immigration super duper quickly. We had to skip, we got to skip all the lines. Um, and people, even like in the little things, like you just don't have enough hands when you're traveling with a newborn. Sorry, my glasses are fucking. Um, you just don't have enough hands. And just being able to give them like a mound of passports and be like, please sort through this. They do, and they are super happy to help. And even like when it came to breastfeeding, they were able to find me quiet rooms inside of the lounge and we're just beyond accommodating. That's it, it is time. Our time in Thailand is over. We're getting on the plane. Uh, and I'm really excited because Qatar has an excellent reputation for having really amazing service, tasty food, and uh, wow. wow, as you can see, this is, I'm sure, their business class situation. Amazing, it looks so, so good. I'm so glad we took Qatar, y'all. Oh my, this is great. Comes with a blanket and a pillow and the baby's best and Ned's gonna be here. Oh, and we're gonna be a napping. Oh, he's already. He's ready. Are you ready? I think so. Thank you. You're very welcome. They are so sweet. They've already brought like his life vest, his seatbelt, and they even 
bought him a little toy. Baba. This, I'm keeping this forever. You're gonna see this video 10 years from now and I'm still gonna have this toy. So we sat down and everybody here has been so lovely. The customer service is unbelievable. They've come, they started making conversation, asking like, oh, how's your baby? You're going back home. Just like being so friendly. And then said, listen, if you need anything, did you get your toy? Great. If you need diapers or you need hot water, if there's anything I can get you, please let me know. Which, wow. like. We're seasoned travelers and even we were a little bit stressed out going into this travel day because it's still 30 plus hours of travel with a newborn and although we know we can take it, it's very unpredictable how he will and so just to think that, you know, the staff here is here to support you, oh, such a weight off this mama, listen. smash this food and then catch you after. So it was really perfect timing. As soon as we finished the meal, Apollo went down for his nap and they came by with drink service. So uh, time to enjoy a few adult beverages while we relax, kick on a movie and unwind. Good morning, question mark. 
yeah, we uh, woke up to the dissension announcement, so we had to take him on a little good thing. Sorry, my brain is not working. Hi, neither. <laughs> We made it off the airplane and made it all the way into the airport and then we're completely shocked with how many people there are transiting through this airport. Yeah. We knew that when we were leaving Thailand that we were gonna be leaving like our COVID free bubble. Not that it was totally COVID free, but everybody there takes like the regulations really seriously. And for the big portion of the pandemic, we didn't deal with any of it at all. And we honestly experienced a little bit of culture shock when we came in because nobody was wearing masks. I know I'm not wearing mine right now, it's because I'm eating, um, but nobody was like, wearing their masks, the lounge isn't really doing any social distancing. Uh, and so anyway, it was just kind of like, I don't really want to show you all that. And I don't really want to walk around and be distracted. I really want to be on my A game with my hand sanitizer and the mask and the whole shabam bam. And it's hard to do with the camera. So as much as I want to show you the Oryx lounge, we're going to catch you on the next flight. Oh, hi. Well, he's asleep. <laughs> Hi, Hello. Wow, it's been so long since I've heard an American accent. I know. So we just boarded our 15 and a half hour flight to Miami from Qatar. And the seats that we were assigned don't have a bassinet this time. And I think I may start crying if there isn't a bassinet. We haven't slept in five days but really actually haven't slept in 36 hours i need sleep y'all i need sleep so i know we didn't really take you in the lounge or show you anything of it and the reason being was i think we touched on earlier it was just so slammed being in this guitar uh airport. like airport has really kind of i don't want to say made us it's made us nervous just because we've lived in a bubble yeah Everybody we've lived in a bubble listen. Everybody has a different layer of comfortability with this whole coronavirus thing. And I totally respect wherever people are with this. We have just come from a country where it wasn't something that was ever present in my everyday yeah. life. And so you never had to really think about it. You made like social adjustments, but that was about it. So all we get is what you see in the news and in the media. Everybody's dying. There's a bajillion cases and nobody cares. And we're seeing the nobody cares part in this whole travel day yeah. for the first time. So it's, you know, it's strange for us. It's a little nerve wracking for us. We have a baby. My sister's pregnant. I don't want to go and give her anything yeah. or catch anything on the way. So needless to say, we're being extra cautious. Right. And then there's a lot of nerves. We haven't seen our family in two years. They haven't met the baby. We just moved out of our house. Like there's a lot going on y'all. This is wrong.
he looks like such a big kid here, my goodness. So to give you a little bit of background, we this travel day was 36 hours. And out of those 36 hours, Daniel, prior to his three hour nap, had slept one hour. And the kind angel let me sleep because obviously we're seeing our family first and he wants me to be able to like be present and alive for them, which I'm so grateful because I'm feeling so good about that. Apollo is all ready to meet his grandparents and his aunt and uncle. All dressed up in a super duper cute outfit. Daniel and I are matching. Um, and yeah, outside of that, we've just been trying to sleep, trying to get rest where we can. Apollo has been an angel. What I'm saying, this child has maybe been awake for 30 minutes out of this 15 and a half hour flight. I am not kidding. And he's just, and he wakes up in the best mood, just all smiley and laughing and wanting to like interact with you. He's the best. I could not ask for a better travel baby. We also acknowledge that we got very lucky with yes. a low tempered job. Yeah, just like He's so, so even and keel. Yeah. Anywho, we are going to wrap up this. I'm gonna let Apollo wrap up his breakfast. Ha, 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 ha.